Hello, wonderful. This is Sarah, and it is the Toxic Person Proof Book Club, which I've been practicing saying because last week I was in St. Petersburg, Florida, and I was recording uh, a book club bonus course. Uh, you guys have seen probably the course with all the expert interviews and all those people, and I also created a bonus course for people to work through the book together because I was so humbled. It was so kind. How many of you guys said me and my friend are doing this. We're working through this together. My friend and I both got the book, you know, and giving you some conversation points because it can be awkward. Like if you want to meet with a friend and do a book club or some of your friends, and then it's just kind of awkward. It's like, oh, what do we say? What do we talk about? And so last week I spent some time filming in St. Petersburg, uh, the book club course that is going to go live April 1st, my birthday. Woo! No fooling. And um, creating that course because so many of you have said, I bought this book for my friend. I bought this book and left it uh, in the for a coworker. My mom, oh, thank you, Allison. My mom uh, just, she was like at a restaurant reading the book and they're like, oh man, I, I really need this. Everyone here needs this. Um, so yeah, it's got quite the uh, prominent future here, a feature here with the, the red flag. And so, the whole book is about the things that are very prominent red flags and the things that might not be prominent, but that we want to see, that we want to, oh, I'm sorry, Lynn. <laughs> she said, I, I bought the book for her and she's been crying. And guys, it is so, so many really amazing people have had their kindness used against them. And I had a call with a girl today and she said, oh, I get so frustrated with the healing journey. I get so frustrated with the process. And I kind of asked her what her healing strategy had been, what she had been doing, what she had been trying. And she said, well, studying codependency. And I was like, well, how's that been going? She goes, well, I'm just not ever motivated to finish. And it's like, well, yeah, it's very frustrating. It's hard to finish. Oh, congratulations, Lynn. She said she just became a grandmother. Uh, that's awesome. Is it a girl or boy? You have to... Tell me, um, but within that process of her trying to find her healing strategy, it was a complete focus on what is wrong with her. What is wrong with her, okay? And when it is like every day, it's, you know, you're in a toxic relationship and you like be get beat up. What's wrong with me? What's wrong with me? You know, you're always trying to figure it out. Everything's your fault. You're just in a struggle, struggle, struggle. Then so many times I see people go into a healing journey and struggle, 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 struggle with what's wrong with them there. And no wonder it's not working. No wonder it is so frustrating and people aren't finishing things. It is so much more power to connect with what's right with you. Um, and uh, oh, congratulations on your girl, Lynn. And Julie just said that she has a divorce trial uh, on April 1st, so it's a great day all around. Um, thank you, Julie. And as I'll use Julie as an example, as she goes into this major process of her life, this major process of change, recreating a new life, getting a divorce, becoming a grandmother, going back into dating, whatever it may be, when you go into that struggle of life or blessing of life or whatever it is, you're going to do better if you're leading with your strengths and you're leading with what's right with you. So this book is to help you connect with what's right with you and to also help people understand if, this book is especially helpful if your friends or family don't understand, gosh, you know, you of all people, why did you put up with that? You of all people, why did you put up with that? You of all people, why did you put up with that? I had an incredible podcast interview that I can, I can post in this group. And it was, I was getting interviewed on her podcast on Marriage Matters. And she had a toxic, her mother had been in a toxic relationship. So it was a daughter who had watched her strong, confident, amazing mother get stuck in a toxic relationship and get sucked into a toxic relationship. And she's like, gosh, 
my mom is who I looked at for confidence. I always thought she was so amazing. Like what happened? And I said, this is what happened. Your mom's not necessarily, I mean, obviously there's some circumstances where toxic is with toxic. Obviously that's true, but it's not always true. And the assumption is you're always broken. You're always dumb. You're always whatever if you are in a toxic relationship. And I do not think that's true. I do not find that to be true. And I am excited to debunk that belief here in Becoming Toxic Person Proof. So very important is dedicated to my wondrous women. And if, uh, okay, so this is one of the, I'm actually at my parents' house, so this is their book. So they were one of the very, very first people to get it. Funny fact about this, it says dedicated to the wondrous woman. Can you see it? Dedicated to the wondrous woman of the past, present, and future. And that happened for about a day. And then the rest of them said wondrous women. So this is my dad's book. He, he was one of the first people to get it. Uh, and he had one of the ones that are, uh, I caught that. I should have caught it before. And I caught it like day one. I was like, no. So if you have one of those, those earliest books, it may have a little typo at the beginning. Hopefully it's the only typo in it. Um, and it was fixed within a day, which is kind of a fun fact. So I started this book out with a very important sentence, okay? Because I think people get really messed up in the belief that someone has to be good or bad. So when you're talking about someone's inherent worth, are they a worthy human? Are they worthy of this experience of humanity? Oh gosh, that's such a tricky conversation when you're talking about toxic people. So one of the, the very first sentence of this um, book is one of the most important sentences of the book, which is this book is not to determine if someone is a good or bad human. I am not the ruler of the universe, right? I don't get to dis this is this, this person's good. This person's bad, but I am responsible. I won't say the ruler of my own life because that can have all kinds of negative connotations for people who have a spiritual background. Uh, but I will say I'm responsible for my own life. And I'm responsible for knowing who is good for me to be around and who is bad for me to be around. And so much in the, the very first bit of the book in the intro, it's about that wisdom to know the difference of who is good for you to be around and who is bad for you to be around. Because what I see is I'm toxic person proof. I shut everyone out. And that is a lonely life. That is a lonely existence. Or I'm a good person. I let everyone in. Oh, thank you. Dietrich said that uh, I did write it for you, Dietrich. You're actually in the book. Um, <laughs> if you see Dietrich in the comments, she has a poem at the very end of the book that was just so beautiful in the chapter on acceptance. And um, she said, I love that it says woman. It feels like I, you wrote it for me. And I did. So uh, as Dietrich is featured in the book. So, but I, it's very, very, very important to recognize, which is so simple and so silly, right? There are some people who were good for me to be around and bring me up and build life in me. And there are some people who tear my life down, make it chaos, make it confusing. Um, it creates storms. Okay. And if there is someone in your life, the very, very important thing is that I talked about at the very beginning is a pattern of behavior. And in my own life, Okay, uh, from a conversation I had with Dietrich, it prompted some things even in my own head. And I, I apologized to my husband this week. And I said, you know, I know there's been some times that I've just been really scared that, you know, five years into this, that you're too good to be true or some, another shoe's going to drop. You know, I, I've, I've been scared sometimes and I've pushed you away or picked a fight or something just because I was scared. And I'm sorry for that. Hopefully that was earlier on. I'm not doing it now, but, but I do want to apologize. And I teared up and over uh, Mexican food, we were at the Mexican restaurant. And I teared up and said that um, 
just trying to be self-aware and, and do the right thing and be introspective and kind, okay? We all have bad days, okay? I'll tell you something on my husband. As this, uh, the Wonder Woman program and all this has grown and grown and grown, he has done very well in business himself, and so he's become more opinionated about what I do, right? Oh, maybe you should try this. Maybe you should try this. And I'm like, mm, this is my baby. Like, you know, these these women, this is my, like my child. I crafted it. I love it. I'm passionate about it, you know? So it's sometimes hard and bristly to, I get bristly when someone tells me something I may sh need to do differently. I feel get very protective, okay? So I said, you know, it's hard on me sometimes when you critique me, but I, I do think you're right about some of the things. But can you give me some more compliments to balance it out? So I don't feel like, uh, you know, just because you're trying to help me that it's critical. And he said, sure. And the next day, every day, I would get compliments, you know? And I want you to see that balance of what a healthy relationship is. When I recognized something was going on that I was doing, and I apologized. And he said, okay, the end. Very short thing, I'm sorry. He goes, yeah, you have done that before. I said, yeah, I know. He goes, it's okay, the end. Okay. And in his situation where he's, he gets business and you know, this and this and this, and I'm like, Oh, I, I don't need business spin. I just need my husband sometimes. And I need you to compliment me if you're going to, you know, say more things about my, my, my business baby. And he says, okay. in the next few days compliments. Okay. That is what healthy relationships sound like. He was probably a little too gruff in his opinions. And I was definitely a little too touchy in some, you know, in my fear. We recognized it or asked for what we needed and it was done. So many of you guys, when you're trying to figure out, you know, is a person toxic or not? It, it's not about one day or a one-off incident that someone apologizes for and then changes. It's this consistent pattern of chaos, consistent pattern of control, consistent pattern of irresponsibility, consistent pattern of trying to manage their image, consistent pattern of blame shifting, consistent pattern of uh, trying to push things on you. And it's the pattern that is so important to see because you get advice from other people, you know, in, in past things it's maybe it's your mom okay so you say oh man my mom is really getting on my nerves and your friend says yeah moms do that they always get on your nerves and if you dig deeper you could say my mom has a pattern of constantly criticizing me my mom has a pattern of asking me to playing the victim and asking me to take responsibility for her life my mom has a pattern of maybe stealing money my mom has a pattern of always choosing my sister over me my mom has a pattern of Pattern, pattern, pattern. And when you're, when you're not able to point out the pattern or to see the pattern, you get little snippets of advice from other people. Maybe someone says, all marriages are hard. Every couple fights. Every family has problems. Everybody has bad days. And there's an important phrase that says there's a difference between a dog who bites you once and a dog who bites you daily. And when there is a pattern of mistreatment, a pattern of blame shifting, a pattern of um, problems, then it creates a toxic relationship. And it means that that relationship is bad for you. Okay, I'm not going to be the judge of whether or not someone is good or bad. Even though many times in my life I thought, yeah, they're bad. Uh, but, but for the, you know, higher form of human, as, as we go to a place of grace and kindness and love and being a good human, it's not about whether or not they're good or bad. It's about whether or not they are worthy of, it's a good idea, I won't say worthy of, whether or not it's a good idea to give you their, give them your energy, your time, your resources, your affection, another few years of your life, give them your hope. 
because some people have a pattern of never showing up for you. Some people have a pattern of one day, you know, Jekyll and Hyde. One day they're nice, one day they're mean. One day they're nice, one day they're mean. And so if, if you're in your head and you're thinking, oh, I don't know if there's a pattern or not, because sometimes they are nice, that is the pattern. When you, sometimes I come in to you, but if you don't do what I want, I'm controlling, I'm angry, I pull away. It's not, I had a bad day. Oh, yeah, you're right, that was a bad day. I'm gonna apologize and do better next time. And when I was in an interview with Lundy Bancroft, <laughs> you know, it was, it was like, how do you know if they're really changing? Because they actually change. It is that simple. How do you know if they are changing? They actually do. And if you have three years or five years or 10 years of data that is saying it's a consistent pattern of problems, it's a consistent pattern of confusion, it's a consistent pattern of blame shifting, it's a consistent pattern of everything being my fault, it's a consistent pattern of them ignoring me, it's a consistent pattern of whatever, you've got your answer. You just don't like the answer. And I don't like the answer either. But the data is the answer. The pattern is the answer. Okay. And uh, Lynn asked about, I see a red flag and I'm done. That is a question. In, in the Wonder Swimming program, we have a three strikes you're out rule. Okay. Because a one off is a problem. A, you know, but the, when you start to see the three strikes you're out, it cre oh my gosh yes Kathy it would be a great book for a male pastor to read my dad is a pastor and he's a little biased but he said it was the best book on emotional health he had read um, another good book for a male pastor to read would be when to walk away by Gary Thomas he's going to be on the podcast soon but he is a um another male talking about this. Uh, it's a very different book, but just to have to give you a couple of resources. Um, so Lynn, within that pattern of behavior, it, it kind of co it covers up, they just had a bad day or they just had a bad moment because we all deserve a second chance. The question is whether or not you are willing to give a 230 second chance. Because that starts, you start to ignore that pattern. Um, but also, that would depend on what the red flag is. You know, if they're violent, if they call you names, you know, uh, if they just lose their temper, if there's any type of prison record or abuse or, you know, getting fired from a job because they're stealing money. I mean, that, though, some red flags are enough on their own. But most of the time, I recommend a three strikes you're out. Because by the time you see those huge red flags glaring in your face, red flag, red flag, it is, you've usually given them a lot of time and resources. Okay, so I'm trying to get you on the front end where you're seeing some of these things and protecting yourself before you've given them three years. With the balance of you know, learning to, ha being able to have relationships with people. Sure, you're never gonna get hurt again if you, you know, never have a relationship with anyone again. That's one of the choices. It's a very lonely choice. And to me, that isn't being toxic person proof, that's being afraid. Being toxic person proof, which I talked about in the intro, segue to there, um, knowing how to be kind without having your kindness used against you having the social and emotional intelligence to move toward healthy people and away from unhealthy people, having the confidence to trust yourself. Okay. So having that confidence and when it's just, I'm shutting everyone out for any reason, that's kind of telling yourself you don't have confidence in yourself to protect yourself. It is a lonely choice. And the whole point of this is that you don't have to go there that you don't have to make that choice, that you can crack open the door, peek your head in, who are you? I'm giving you an opportunity to show you, show me who you are. That's all it is. I'm giving you an opportunity to show me who you are, and I'm going to look at your pattern of behavior to see who you are. And then if what I see, I see a pattern of red flags, I see a pattern of bad behavior, 
I shut the door. Okay. That's it. It's that simple. We make it really complicated because fear takes over, emotions take over. And I talk about that in the lessons from a hot dog session, uh, section, if uh, that which comes later in the book. But when fear and emotion takes over, we just kind of shut down and push people out. And it is a lonely choice. So number four on becoming toxic person proof, being able to control your own thoughts even if someone else is trying to control them. And I go through this in depth in the book, okay? Yeah, you feel like something's off, something's weird, and then they kind of manipulate a situation to get you to trust them instead of trusting yourself. And anyone who is purposely trying to get you to not trust yourself is almost always a bad idea the only time i say i say that in reference to uh, many of us have been in relationships with people where people tried to talk us out of ourselves <laughs> and we were like no they're really great you just don't know them no they're amazing no they're not going to do that to me no that may have been your experience but it's not going to be mine ex my experience um so that is the the flip side of that coin is the people who try to warn us and say, there's a red flag there. And we said, nah, that flag's not red, it's pink. It's not a problem. I'll be so good at loving that I'll turn that flag white. Um, that is the only time I do wanna point that out because when we learn to trust ourselves, I want to also have established a relationship with ourselves that is trustworthy not a relationship with ourselves that zones in, focuses in, I'm doing, you know, I am locked into this toxic person, or at the time you wouldn't think they were toxic, but I'm loyal to them over being loyal to myself. I have all the loyalty and commitment for them and to them, and I have no loyalty and commitment to myself. That's where, that's the dynamic you don't want. But for the most part, if someone is talking you out of trusting yourself, especially gaslighting, trusting what happened, trusting your own reality, that's a huge red flag. That is something to watch out for. Um, yeah, and Stephanie talked about not knowing how, knowing how people could behave that way, stuck on the how and why um, someone would do these things. And Thank you. Uh, making sense of behavior that make no sense. And one of the things I want to say is, why do they act that way? Because they get their way. They, they get their way more than we get our way. And they are selfish and resist change. And then that is the answer. And then so many of us go, but why are you so selfish? But why do you resist change? But why are you that way? And it's like, whoa, 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 we have the answer. There's a difference in having the answer and not liking the answer. And one of the huge components of my work that I have just been relentless, and I feel like a broken record at this point, because um, I'm always asking, what problem are you trying to solve? What problem are you trying to solve? What problem are you trying to solve? Okay. And if we can't get clear about what problem we're trying to solve, we're always going to be spun up. It's always going to be drama. It's always going to be confusing. We're always going to feel stuck. And sometimes when we are trying to solve, why are they that way? What we're really thinking is, I, you know, I really still feel like if I could just find out why that I could change them or I could fix them or they would love me or they would be different. If I can just figure out that why, and we don't get honest with ourselves. In that case, the problem you were trying to solve is how can I get them to be different? How can I get them to treat me differently? And as we get into the chapters on boundaries later on, many people end up using boundaries, establishing boundaries, learning boundaries with the hope that it will change the toxic person. That if they stand up for themselves, the toxic person will be different. Okay, so there's much more conversation on that when we get to the chapter on boundaries. But 
so I do want you to ask when you get stuck in the why you know, why are they why are they that way really get honest with yourself and say is the problem you're trying to solve is do you are you telling yourself if you if you figure out why that you can figure out how to change them or figure out how to make them different because the answer as to why they act that way is very simple they are getting their way they act that way because they get their way they get to avoid responsibility they get to control things they get to um, keep creating storms okay thank you Jojo she said she's been reading your book before bed uh, yeah and Dietra said look for the patterns not the potential and if the pattern is they do the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over and over again there's a really strong chance that they want to behave that way. Okay. And I want you to think um, if I, you know, I say, oh, I'll use, I'll use exercise as an example, you know, and I sit there on the couch, I've got my ice cream, my potato chips, and I say, man, I really want to get in shape. I really want to get in shape. I'm just eating, and I am. I see. I use this example because because of writing the book and stuff. I feel like I have just gotten. I've been sitting, sitting, sitting so much more than I have at other points of my life. So one of my goals is uh, to uh, get my health back in order because I have been eating a lot of junk and and sitting a whole lot. So I'm using this example for me. Uh, but if I'm eating, 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 and burgers and fries and pizza and just sitting on the couch and I say I really want to get in shape it's really hard to believe me because you say well if you wanted to be different you would and with toxic people if they keep going back and doing the same things over and over again there's a very good chance that they are not interested in changing and if they're only telling you they're going to change if they're only telling you they're interested in therapy when they're afraid of losing you that is a sign they are trying to trick you into giving them a 256th chance rather than them actually wanting to change. Because if they actually want to change, they will. Even if they're small steps, you know, I mean, maybe you don't go from sitting on the couch eating ice cream to running a marathon that day. But there are some changes that you can see. You try to eat a little healthier. Try to make a little different choice. You try to do a little better. You try to be a little less selfish. Okay, so hope that makes sense. Um, and I'm at my parents' house. Should have uh, taken the phone off the hook. Um, they actually have a home phone still. Hardly anyone has a home phone. No, oh, very good. I'm gonna take that off the hook. See, when y'all say you have to be perfect, you can just think about the, the one live I did with spinach in my teeth and then not taking the phone off the hook at my parents' house before I recorded this. Um, so, okay, so what if they don't see anything to change but it's all me? Toxic people almost always think that. And the best way to figure out who is really toxic, okay, is who is getting the better end of the deal of the relationship. Who has all the power? Who makes all the rules? Who gets to break the rules? Okay. And one person usually gets to make the rules, enforce the rules, break the rules, and one person is expected to follow the rules. One person is expected to do all the work of the relationship. One person is expected to change and, you know, and toxic people use boundaries too. They'll say, oh, it's a bound, you know, I'm using boundaries to stand up to you. They're resisting change. They are being selfish. You could think about it as a seesaw too. I've never used this example, just kind of came to mind. But when it's a seesaw and they get to be really selfish and you're expected to be really giving and forgiving, then that's how you know who is toxic. And that is the way I would explain your relationship to others. You know, he, this person 
Uh, maybe it's a sister, okay? So within our relationship, my sister is always getting the better end of the deal. I'm always expected to accommodate her. I'm always expected to do the work of the relationship. I'm always expected to um, you know, make sure her needs, her priorities, her desires, her wants are always more important than mine. That is a much easier thing for people to digest than saying something along the lines of, well, you know, my sister has borderline personality disorder. I think my sister is a narcissist. Okay. When you explain the seesaw, you explain we're not playing by the same set of rules. When you say they always get to make the rules, they have all the power in their relationship. They use their anger to control me. That is a lot easier for people to digest than you diagnosing. Yes, yeah, always getting the better end of the deal. Um, yeah, and Carol said, Carol, were you the one who asked me about doing the podcast on like leaving a cult? Um, I think you may have been. Uh, so, yeah, and Melinda's saying, if you try to explain your side of things, you get the silent treatment for days. Well, that is how they keep all the rules of the relationship. They keep all the power. And in the book later on, it talks about people who have ears willing to hear. And oh, Melinda, I, I'm going to be very careful as I say this because this is a hard, a hard thing to hear. Um, but yes, Stephanie's right. It is punishment. And we, if we are good, kind, loving, giving, and forgiving, we assume other people care about our side of things. Other people care about our feelings. Other people care about our needs. And sometimes they don't. Sometimes all they care about is themselves. So they are training you to stop telling them your side of things. Stop having that conversation. Okay, and I'm sorry, that is a really hard thing to hear just like on a video online. Um, but that is a pattern that many people have seen and experienced. I'm sorry. Um, so sorry. So, yes, uh, so within the, I don't know if you're, that's in the intro about how to know if your situation is toxic. And another important thing is the more persistent the pattern, the more toxic the relationship, okay? And going back again to that point of there is a difference between a dog who bites you once and a dog who bites you daily. And I do want to, yeah, uh, Kathy said her love languages were used against her every day. Toxic people will use anything against you. They'll use your kindness against you. They'll use your loyalty against you, they'll flip things and get you to defend yourself. Well, you know, I thought you were the type of person who wasn't selfish. Looks like you really are selfish, right? Like those are all things that, um, toxic people will use anything against you. And if you, one day, uh, I'll use the example of making dinner. If one day, if you make a chicken dinner, they say, why don't you love me? Why don't you care about me? Why didn't you make steak? Don't you think I deserve steak? I'm the king of the castle. I deserve steak. But the next night you make steak and they say, why are you so selfish? Why do you not care about money? Do you know how expensive steak is? How dare you make steak? And you're like, what? Well, what? How, how is this happening? It creates this horrific cognitive dissonance that is confusing. That's why the subtitle of this book is Clear the Confusion and Learn to Trust Yourself. Because if you've been in a situation like that, where everything is used against you and it keeps, it keeps you feeling crazy, then you're exhausted after that. It's very confusing. But the point is not the chicken or the steak. The point is that they are in a position of power over you. And you feel like you are always trying to earn your place in the relationship and they keep moving the finish line. They set up the game where you never win. And they keep moving along and you keep trying. And they keep moving things along and you keep trying. Okay, And that's how you know if the relationship is toxic. That pattern of you trying, them moving the finish line, 
so that they always get their way and you are always working. Okay. So in a toxic relationship, you are always working and they keep asking you to work harder. And in a healthy relationship, it doesn't feel that way. You're going to have bad days. You're not going to be perfect. You're going to apologize and try to do better next time. That's it. You're playing by the same set of rules or at least rules that you both agree on. Maybe, um, you know, some things are traditional in our house. Like uh, my husband always kind of worries about the yard. I never worry about the yard and he hardly ever worries about the laundry, right? So when we come home, you know, I do the laundry and he does the yard work. So we're not exactly playing by the same set of rules because uh, I don't want that to get confusing. But we are both in a situation where we both feel confident and clear and the, the ground isn't always shifting underneath our feet. You're not always walking on eggshells. You're not always concerned about getting in trouble. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Somebody said um, that uh, their ex always wanted a heart healthy diet and then he wouldn't eat what she made. Right? It's so common. It's like you just you keep, okay, I'm going to get it right this time. I'm going to get it right this time. I'm going to get it right this time. And then it's like, I can never get it right. And then you start to blame yourself and wonder what's wrong with you. And then you go to many mental health therapists or strategists or whoever or coaches and they say, oh, it's codependency. That's what's wrong with you. What? You're trying to be loving. You're trying to be kind. You're trying to do the right thing, which I address in my chapter on smart girl syndrome and smart guy syndrome. So that's coming up soon. Um, yeah, the, she said, uh, Deidre said, they would bait you and then blame. Oh, gosh, they do that all the time. And that's what's really tricky when you leave a toxic relationship because at that point you're just so, you're not your best self, right? You're, you're tired, you're exhausted, you feel confused, you, you're unsure of how to trust yourself, okay? And they bait you. Well, well, you know, and it's like a, a, a poke, 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 and then you finally react and they say, oh, well, look at you, got a temper. And gosh, I mean, even as I, I say those words, it just feels so evil. It just feels evil. Even though I started this with saying, they're not good or bad. <laughs> you know, that, that practice feels evil, you know? And I think about a child at a desk at school and they're getting kicked under the desk, kicked under the desk, kicked under the desk. And then they, the other child says, gosh, I've had enough. No more kicking me. And that child gets in trouble for interrupting the class. They finally reacted. They finally reached the end of their rope. And they got in trouble for their reaction as if it were equal to the, what caused the reaction. And in the book, Man's Search for Meaning, he talks about uh, an abnormal, what is it? A normal experience to an abnormal circumstance. And he was talking about um, being in a concentration camp, okay? But when people act badly in a concentration camp or they're stuck in survival, it's a normal, normal response to an abnormal situation. It doesn't mean you're bad, broken, messed up because we all have things we need to work on. But if we're trying to lead with what's wrong with us after a toxic relationship, it's gonna be really tough to ever feel better. And that's why people say healing's a lifelong journey. The scars last forever. Yeah, they're gonna last forever if you're always figuring out what's wrong with you. Now what's wrong with me? Now what's wrong with me? Now what's wrong with me? I was on a coaching client, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, somebody, uh, Christine said when he left, my ex said he'd done all the work in the relationship. Yeah, they flip, blame flip, blame, blame shift. Um, and then there's an argument about your reaction without ever addressing the problem you were reacting in the first place. And Tiffany, there is covered extensively in the book and how to keep communication addressed. Okay, keep them on point with communication so that you can recover from that, that blame shift. 
because that's exactly it. It's like the conversation is all about your reaction rather than what caused you to react that way. That, I think there's like two chapters on that. It is covered extensively within the book. So definitely check that out. Um, awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for joining me and being a part of this. And so, yeah, the preface and the intro, that's, that's that. That's what's covered and that's what you can expect. And that's some background knowledge on it. Um, and then next Tuesday at 12 Eastern, we will hit chapters one and two. So I, I thought it would take forever if we just did one chapter each time, but, but it gives you guys some direction, some insight and some connection. Um, because when you've been in a toxic relationship, it can feel like you're the only one experiencing this or you're all alone or no one gets it. And people very, 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 very much get it and, and understand your journey. So thank you guys. Um, make sure if you've not invited a friend, uh, to the group so they can be a part of this or a part of the book club with you. Uh, yes, Elizabeth Eastern Standard Time. Um, be a part of this with you that they can, they can join in. And watch out for April 1st because last week I recorded that book club course that is set up so that if you and a friend want to, so many people, they say, oh, after they leave a toxic situation, they say, I want to help someone else. I want to help someone else. I want to help someone else. Okay. So one of the ways you can really help someone else in a healthy way. Ah, they, the, I, my little trip did me good. I had the best time in St. Petersburg. I had the best time. It was my first solo vacay and uh, it did not end up being solo at all. <laughs> Hey, there are so many um, wondrous women in that area, and and it was interesting because um, it was it was just great, and uh, I I missed my husband, I, I missed him, I missed my life, and you know one of the things I'm working on personally right now is kind of enjoying this life that I've been able to create and and, and been blessed to live because it was not fun to be me for a long time in my life. It was miserable to be me. It was horrible to be me. It was a battle to be me. And so switching into, it's one of the things I reflected on last week is really just thinking, um, I'm, I'm happy to be me now. I've created a life I'm happy to be living and, uh, and learning to enjoy that and not always finding a problem to solve, even as I'm helping you guys solve problems. Uh, you know, being, being at a place and kind of saying, ah, I did all that work and it, it really paid off and I'm really happy to be me now, uh, which was the goal, which is the goal. So it's nice. It, it's nice to, I haven't arrived fully. I'm sure. No, of course not. Uh, but you know, uh, there is a better life out there. There is, there can be happiness, but there cannot be happiness in just banging your head against the wall, hoping a toxic person changes or leaving a toxic relationship and then just like not ever having a healing strategy and just walking in circles or only studying personality disorders. That is a great place to start and a horrible place to finish. Uh, thank you, April. Trying to lead by example for sure. That is definitely um, a goal of mine. And you know, one of the reasons I kind of tell you guys what I'm working on now and being vulnerable in that. And I'm really confident when I feel like I have an answer and it's like, this is the answer. And then also to be vulnerable and, um, and say, you know, this is what I'm working on right now. Because if anyone tells you they have everything figured out, you should really run away from them because they are not being honest. <laughs> so it is this balance of like, this is what I'm good at. This is what I'm working on. This is what I'm good at. And this is what I'm working on. Um, so Kara, I'm excited to, um, have you with that, with that feeling too. I actually thought about you a lot last week, so uh, I'll have to catch up. Uh, but thank you guys for being here. Thank you for your support of the book. April 1st, I will launch the Sharing is Caring campaign for my birthday, uh, where every book that's purchased on that day, I will match it and donate a book to either a women's shelter or a public library or somewhere that um, other people who need free resources or people who help people in this arena, they can get the book and you will get that uh, with the purchase of the book. Uh, if you give it away, that's the whole point. It's like a sharing is caring day. We want to give the book away to someone who needs it. Even if you leave it 
in a break room or something where someone can just pick it up, leave it in a hotel, leave it somewhere if you don't have anybody in your life you're comfortable giving it to. Uh, and you'll get the bonus book course, which is different than the bonus expert course that some of you may have already gotten. So when I recorded last week where I'm walking you through a book club, I'm sitting at the pool, uh, I'm talking to you, I'm chatting it up, sometimes little bugs crawl on me and it's very, um, in Sarah style, uh, not, I hardly ever re-record anything. I, I want you guys to feel like, you know, um, this is me and, and it is, we're just sitting here hanging out together. And I met four wondrous women last week for the first time. And I, gosh, my goal is for none of them to be like, oh, I thought you were this way and you're this way, right? I, I, I want you guys to see the the me that is all the time and that leading by example it's a really 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 important process so for you to be a part of that process um i can't always be perfect on camera now one of the things that was really funny is you probably can't see it i ran into a pole and smashed my face there was like one of those poles it was like this but then had this like side piece and i was walking and like hit my face on the pole because there was glass on the ground around it because i think someone else had hit the pole but I saw all this glass on the ground. I had on flip flops. It was Florida. So I started looking down at the ground rather than up at the pole and hit my face. Uh, so that was kind of, you know, one of the Wonder Swimmin's first like live uh, impressions of me was me hitting my face on a pole. It was very odd, uh, but not something I normally do. But it is like, you know, it's it's that anyone who acts like they have it all together. I would watch out for that person. Uh, but, you know, just being our most vulnerable selves without being a victim-y self, right? Because sometimes I think when we think, okay, I'm, I'm going to be a vulnerable person, that ends up, we think the only option for that is being victim-y. Like, oh, and this happened to me, and this happened. You won't believe what happened to me, and this happened to me, right? And you could be vulnerable because you're connected with what you want to work on and your imperfections and be really connected with what you're good at and what you feel strong in and your best version of you, which is my goal for each of you. So I hope, yeah, it was it was really bad. <laughs> Teacher said, ouch, and it was, it really hurt. It was like, a, I was afraid I had, was gonna have a bruise on my face. Uh, there was glass on the ground. I was watching, I was paying attention is what's funny, but I looked down because uh, there was like huge chunks of glass on the ground. It was very odd. So if you do anything stupid today, you can think about, about me and think at least I didn't hit my face on a pole, which left a bruise. So it's got to be better than that. So uh, sending you guys love. I will see you next week. Same time. Be on the lookout around April 1st for that information uh, on the Sharing is Caring campaign. And let's change the world together. Hope you're having a great day.